welcome back to Bayonas RC World. All right, guys, it's been a while. All right, I'm still alive, still here. It's time to start cranking out some more content here on the channel. All right, so what we got, we have the T-Rex 700XN Dominator with a OS 105HZ engine and 105 power boost muffler by OS. We're gonna be controlling the helicopter with my Fataba 14SG the top of receiver and micro beast x plus all right so i'm going to take you along on how i set up my rc helicopter from start to finish all the way up up to the flying field all right so if you like content like this uh, i not only build rc airplanes i also do rc helicopters if you go back in my channel to the, i actually got a playlist for rc helicopters i got all my rc helicopter videos there so if you like to go back and look check it out should appreciate it but other than that Let's get cracking into this box and actually get this 700 assembled and set up. All right, guys, don't forget to click that like, subscribe to the channel, and if you are subscribed, I surely appreciate you. All right, without further ado, let's get into it. All right, guys, so we're gonna go ahead and open up the box. I'm not gonna really do an unboxing. Uh, there's a lot of videos online on the unboxing itself, uh, especially by a line. So I'm just gonna open it up and uh just go through it really quick i mean i think uh we just do time lapse all right All right, guys, so we got all the contents out of the boxes, as you can see. And then we get into the actual assembly. So the first thing we're going to be doing is taking apart something that's already been put together. All right, so this is, is the actual flyballer's head. Uh, all right, so we're going to have to open it up, uh, unscrew everything, disassemble it, grease what we have to grease, and uh, apply uh, blue Loctite to whatever uh, metal to metal screws and bowl links and all that stuff. Alright, so yep. Also in my experience don't just open up the packaging and throw it away. Alright, because I had a few where you see this blade grip bowl link or bow in. I had that actually not attached. It was actually somewhere in the packaging. And so, uh, without knowing, I opened everything up, put everything, laid it out, threw the packaging out to find out that I was missing that and it was actually stuck in the bubble wrap thing. All right, so that's what we're gonna do first. We're gonna open this up and get cracking. It's gonna bring you a little closer and actually see the whole head. This is the assembly of the head. Which, like I said, another thing here is, you know, screwed down tight and everything. So we're gonna disassemble this. All right, so we're just gonna remove pretty much all the screws and whatever. taking these things apart just make sure there's no like little washers or anything like that all right so all this is going to be loctited all right but we're just gonna we're also gonna clean the screws before we apply loctite to them Mm -hmm. 
as you can see right now none of these screws are torqued down so they're just just basically finger tight on there finger tight as well and you give me new tools it comes from my heli stuff let's remove that you just gotta be mindful all right you got your washer right here you got your bearing inside you got a bearing in here and then you got your thrust bearings inside in between all that all right so we got to take that out as well to ensure that everything is all greased up and all. All right, over here we'll just pull this out. There we go. We got that. So you got your dampeners in there. All right. And you got your actual, as you can see here. You got your spindle, and then you got your thrust bearing inside. And for what it is, this one is completely uh, greased up so far. Uh, I can see yeah, there's grease in there, or at least some real small amount. But we're still gonna basically clean it up and we're gonna apply some more grease to that okay so we got that i got my uh i got one this one way bearing grease here so we're gonna basically clean off the threads here so i got my rag and i got some denatured alcohol here and what we're just gonna do is just run and you can see we got some oil on all that stuff coming off of the uh screw all right just try to clean it as good as you can. Just get all that oil off of there. And the grime and debris from the uh, machining process. All right, and then we can go ahead and uh, put Loctite on that. All right, so this one here, I'm gonna be utilizing some red Loctite. And this is just a little dab. That's a little bit more than a dab, but Go ahead and just clean that off a little. All right. And just make sure you don't get any of that on the actual bearing itself. All right. So we do that. So just gonna go ahead and uh, tighten this down. Yeah, um, you can use blue on this one here. I'll just go ahead and use the blue one. Just put a dab. All right, you don't have to cake it on there. And this one will get applied on here, just like so. tighten these things down too don't over torque them because you don't want to strip the aluminum on the blade grip that for sure so I want to keep it nice you want to keep it tight but don't kill it all right and this one right here you got uh, you got a you get a washer right there on one side on this side here so be mindful that you have a washer there at the actual head portion And 
and when you do this part to minimize the amount of uh, or any type of Loctite going in the bearing all right you want to go ahead and um, uh, just put the Loctite down in here all right that way when you're putting the screw in um, the Loctite doesn't go back into the bearing and then seep inside there and then cause a little bit of friction and drag and all that stuff right so as you see right now this thing is very smooth it'll rotate on its own I've seen it in the past where we put too much Loctite we put it on and when it dries now it's it's dragging a little alright it no longer wants to spin freely so um, you could do that by putting a drop of um, Loctite on the thread but just remember when you're screwing it down in there if it's on the thread it's gonna keep going back up towards the inside of the bearing all right so what you could do there is um, get yourself a like a toothpick or something put a little bit of Loctite put it inside the thread in the head itself that way when you're screwing it down in there it's actually pushing the Loctite you know towards the back area all right so that's just a little thing just to preventing the loctite from getting in that bearing all right i got uh that's more than enough for this whole model to be true where did i put the cover Anywho, I'm just gonna get some Loctite here. I'm just gonna run it right inside the thread area here. Alright. Get that nice and coated inside. Just like that. Alright, and then we can go ahead and attach this. And that's the whole reason for doing that is so, because if you were to put um, Loctite and dab it right here you know you put too much you can have the chance of um, that Loctite when you're screwing this thing in go towards the actual bearing itself and cleaning off all the oil yeah, yeah. just so that we can ensure that the Loctite does adhere well all right so before we do all that as well, we can also take care of these. All right. But since I already put the Loctite on this, we'll just go ahead and take care of that. You don't want to over torque it down too. Alright, but there you go, that's that. Um, this side here, we'll also take care of with the drop of oh, that's too much just coating the threads inside I mean, it really goes a long way just to Here of this because this is not even Loctite as well all right so as you can see right here I'm unscrewing it with my finger all right make sure you take your stuff apart and change it out or uh, clean it up and put some Loctite on there all right so once again this clean that up you'll see the rag turning black with the grease and stuff the oil all right and this one right here that has a bearing in there as well so same principle is going to apply you don't want to uh, kick that on with Loctite because the chances of that Loctite going inside the bearing or at least coating that bearing area 
will be pretty high. Alright, so what I'm doing is separating that just like that. Check all this. Make sure it's all clean. Alright, so as you can see that they've got some small bearings right in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the Loctite in that thread, threaded area. Alright, and that's gonna go all the way through the opposite side here. So all you need really just clean that all off. And that way we don't actually have a whole bunch of um Loctite on there. Alright. Just also when you're putting this back, make sure you're putting it back on the right direction. Also take care of this side as well. Take the screw completely off. in there clean up the screws on this one we still got some denatured alcohol in here As you can see, still free. Everything here is nice and free, nice and tight. All right. So this is going to go just like that, and it gets put on the shaft. So right now, as it stands, we got this complete head pretty much assembled. All right. So from here, we will move into actually getting the swash plate done all right and you can see the bags that you need right they got the cor uh, corresponding numbers with the bag and parts and stuff like that so just take a look and you'll see the numbers right there and all that good 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 stuff 
Alright, so uh, what I like to do is just go through the manual ahead of time, kind of see what the next assembly is going to be, and we'll go from there. Alright, so from here we're just going to open this up, and we're going to take care of the uh, swash plate. Got your main mast, all right, and you got your swash plate. Now, like I said, everything I'm gonna repeat myself again. That everything in this kit is not Loctited yet. As you can see, I just opened it from the package, but most of these you can just turn with your fingers and remove the um, the links. All right, the ball, as you can see right here. All this will need to come off. Just like that and all that will eventually need to get loctited all right all right so same deal we're gonna clean up all the uh, threads see we've got grime and stuff right there all right so so we got all that clean now this one we can actually just put a little dab of loctite on the thread right here just like that we can actually do that to all All the threads, all the balls. That's a really small dab. That's all you need. This one is also on there. And so this one. Take care of this. Got all that loctited. That swash plate is pretty much done. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next page. And this is basically here. We're gonna take care of the actual uh, linkages. All right, so. We got your swash, all that. We got your bag number all right this is gonna go right in here like so and on the opposite end on this one is a nut all right so just like that 
but eventually this is where the uh, main shaft is gonna enter all right and get locked in but before you also do that you also got to uh, slide the swash plate in there all right but in the meantime we're gonna go ahead and take care of these link elevator uh, ball links all right This, this particular one, uh, one goes clockwise, the other one goes counterclockwise, right? And that is make sure it goes in straight too. that let's go open up the main shaft we got two washers here well actually different shim sizes here all right so this one here depending after you put everything together and how much play you have on the head and the shim then I mean, or then you would shim it, right? sure that before we do that this is like that Here, I'm just going to pop this on. also when you do that when you pop that in just double check that you didn't get any um, crack in or anything all right at the uh, this arm just make sure there's no cracks on that shouldn't be any but you just never know all right so we got that on there right. and then we can go ahead and take uh, one of our links like again the a was always facing away from or outside of the uh link and right because there is a, a difference in diameter size all right 
So the one with the A embossed in the front, the f main circumference here is a little smaller than the back side. And it's also the way it's cupped inside. It, it's shaped and formed to, except for that ball. All right, so. Just be mindful. All right. Also just double check the tightness. Uh, for me, I normally just leave it like this for a while, you know, and just kind of run it and eventually it'll kind of wear in. Uh, there is a reaming, a reaming tool that you could use or the old school way is to just basically take your needle nose pliers. Um, and what you do is you just squeeze the, uh, the link here. All right, you just kind of squeeze it together without cracking it, and what that does, it'll kind of kind of open that up a little bit more, kind of give it, make it a little loose. All right, you don't want it too loose. Uh, it's the reason why I just tend to just leave it the way it is and run it that way. All right, and it'll just wear in nicely. All right, so that's that. on there as well all this is gonna get fine-tuned as well when we get to that stage all right and we also got another bolt here and washer which should have put that on before I did this There you go. And so you got these tick marks, right? Right up top on the main hub, the head, and then actually the uh, blade grips. All right. So once this thing's all set, um, if you line it up, that should bring you to zero degrees pitch. All right. So you can start fine adjusting your arms here. All right, but in the meantime, right now, we're not gonna worry about that. All right, and then we got our actual blade grip bolts that you can just go ahead and situate there. pretty much the actual head and uh, swash main mast just like that all right let's go continue moving on all right. next is right here 700 NB21 which is that one right here all right this is our main gear and like I said everything is assembled from the factory but not Loctited so just keep that in mind I keep repeating myself on that one so you want to make sure you take things apart you know make sure everything's all good uh, 
we're gonna pull this off real quick and we're just gonna see all right so as you can see this one here the, their main uh, gear actually has Loctite and it's been Loctited all right but hey we don't know right when 90% of the uh, kit is pretty much not Loctite it then you know you still gonna go through everything all right whoops whoops all right just just go through everything doesn't hurt see we got Loctite here as well all right so I'm gonna say at least this the gear and the uh, one-way bearing hub thing is um, has been properly secured all right but knowing me I want to make sure I don't want to have that in the back of my head I should have checked you know what I mean all right even if you, you ready we already went to three of them and we see that all three so far is still this has been Loctited all right so I got the triflow you know lubricant here I don't have any more of the trifle grease and so unfortunately so I'm just gonna put a few drops in here all right and then while I do that as well just kind of coat this right here stuff on the main gear right. cool so we got that So we're going to match up the holes to ensure that we are there. All right, just like that. And eventually, once this thing goes into the frame of the actual helicopter, this will get pushed down in there like that. And then the screw goes on there, just like so. All right. And just to keep everything locked in there, we're just gonna go ahead and leave it in there. Just so we don't lose this. All right. So just like that, we got pretty much this whole 
portion done. Alright, so you got your one way bearing, everything is working there fine, smooth. Alright, now this is the this is the transmission portion, the drive. Alright. Now I'm gonna show you what comes in the kit. This is what comes in this kit. Just right here. Alright. Now as you can see, okay, we've got our fan, we got our hub, right? And then we got we got this plastic doohickey, this this whole thing right here. Alright, let's go see if we can separate this. Uh, let me get a get something here to separate this thing. Without stabbing myself. Alright, there you go. Just like that. That's pretty much it in a nutshell. You got your bearing right here. If I can get it out. Yeah. Okay. I got it. Alright, so this is the bearings. And this is what pretty much melted on my first one so my bearing completely disintegrated on the first uh, XN and this gear on my XN my first one both of these gears were pretty much melted into the case sideways like that all right so they popped out the bearing broke all that stuff and all this was all twisted and mangled in there all right so I um, and also the bearing kind of shot out through the side over here because it all melted and so uh, with that said uh, yeah it was a it was a mess but this is pretty much this is the transmission guys so you can see it right here all right and I could see where it can get hot and then the bearings kind of get hot here and melt the uh, the holder you know and eventually once that bearing melts gets too hot and it starts melting the plastic there's nothing there to really hold that bearing and hold the gear nice and straight when it's rotating so eventually it will cockside and then you know all that will just go hay bonkers so now we got the replacement upgrade for this And this one is the metal version of that. And so hopefully this will prevent that from happening once again. All right now this one right here, I don't know if you can see it. That is the part number and all. I got this one from Heli's Direct, so we'll check them out. All right. This one is actually held in there with screws, so that's pretty cool. All right. So the 600XN also has this 
if you go into like Heli's Direct and when you're placing the order um, and you go says um, further down below so uh, other people have purchased this with you know this kit and they'll show you this specific part and as you can see here we got we got new bearing for the center so I don't know am I gonna replace the bearing that came with the this one or are they the same yeah they're the same so I'm taking it they give you this extra bearing because this is the bearings that shattered blew up um, as a matter of fact that's the same thickness too so I don't know same thickness same same brand so yeah so this should just drop right in just like that same goes with this one well, that kind of hurt This one as well. You want to make sure all this is nice and tight. Has some Loctite on there. I had it in the past where this, if you don't have this thing on the right notch and everything, it's notorious for coming loose. Especially on like other helis too. And that's the same thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this as well the grub screw all right and it, you can see it has little indentations so that's exactly where that screw needs to be placed back onto that way it'll prevent it from slipping all right but I just want to make sure that uh, this is all tight down and everything and we're good to go you see that never take it for granted guys uh, nothing here is locked tighted or tightened down all right so we got that we got the bearings and then you got you got the pinion which is not even secure properly that's the reason why I tell you to go through the whole thing take it apart clean it put Loctite because as you can see I was able to remove that with just my hands all right as you can see it does have it just shows signs well that looks more like burr like aluminum so we're just gonna go ahead and clean that off and I'm hoping that uh, I didn't get a dud one you know Clean that off. When I say dud, it's because I see I see some uh, some aluminum shavings. It's kind of freaking me out because see some aluminum shavings on the threads. That means it's either they cut into the thread and it cross threaded the dang thing, or you know I'm just hoping that's not the case. I'm gonna clean that out, clean these threads out as well, so we don't have any additional burr in there that will cause any type of um, re-threading when we're putting that pinion back on here. All right, guys. So what we're going to do now is we are going to install the governor magnets in its respective location on the clutch bell. All right. Now, before we do that, as you can see on the governor uh, magnets itself, uh, we got, let me separate this. 
we got ah. all right so we got one side with a red dot the opposite side also has a red dot so we have two magnets with red dots right so the red dot is represents north and the unmarked side is basically your south all right so you want to make sure that uh, you actually have one north and one south or either or south north depending doesn't matter all right that as long as you have a north facing up and a south facing up when you install this otherwise your governor is not going to pick up you know the, the sensor the magnets on the sensor all right now um this is not in all cases like in all uh, governors um, I believe the V bar or something like that. Uh, some another governor out there has it where I think both is facing the same direction. All right, but in this case, you got red dot. That means north. No dot. That's south. So this is exactly how it's going to go in here. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to drill a one thirty second hole right smack down in the center of each pocket all right so if you can see right in there i got nothing in there there's no hole all right and what that's going to do is going to allow the 30 minute epoxy and the air right to kind of ooze out from the bottom side and it's going to act like a vacuum and suck down the magnet in there if you don't have a hole in there what's going to happen is, is when you put the magnet uh the epoxy in there and you squeeze the magnet down all right you're, you're getting all that air you know trapped in there so what's going to happen is that the magnet is going to want to lift back up all right so you're going to end up having to take a clamp and clamping it down and all and um I found it that uh, the magnet still popped out uh, over time all right and so when I do the actual drilling of the bottom base area straight down right none of my magnets ever flew off all right now every clutch bell is different there's some that actually don't even have these pockets that you're actually gonna have to drill out your own hole all right and there's some that actually has the hole down in the center all right automatic you know just that's just the way it is and it's how different manufacturers well this is what i'm going to do is i'm going to drill that straight down all right so let's get on with it all right so we got the magnets here I'm gonna put this to the side so it doesn't get lost I got my Dremel with my 132nd drill bit on here in there now on the opposite side just make sure it's there's no burr sticking down you know clean it off if you have to Then, 
I got some nature alcohol in here. We'll just kind of get that all in there and clean this out. Get our 30 minute epoxy. Just a little mix. Alright. I'm going to go ahead and fill up this cavity with epoxy just like that we're going to make sure that we got one facing down south and one is going to be facing up north Using a wooden stick to push that down, you're gonna turn it around. You're gonna see some of that epoxy squirted out. Make sure it's clean, so you don't want all that residue on the um, clutch, the liner itself. Okay, we got this one now. We're going to put this on. Same thing. We got all that epoxy on there. Push this down just like that. Wipe that off. Go from the back side. Clean this off. you could also do so I've done this in the past as well is put a thin layer right above the magnet you don't have to do that but if you're very cautious about the magnet flying off then yeah you won't want to do it but I think this is good I don't think it's going anywhere 30 minute epoxy is going to hold Make sure it's all pushed down on there. Yeah, just like that. All right. Alright, so just like that, as you can see, All right, we got the magnet in there, we got one red dot here, no dot there, so that's north, that's your south, and underneath you can see the two holes going through, alright, so epoxy shot out through there, and you're good to go, alright, so just going to let that dry overnight basically or well, I mean I can continue doing the build and all um, the assembly and by the time we get this thing ready to run that will be completely dry alright alright so now we can go ahead and uh, get this thing back together and on this one I want to use red Loctite you know I don't I don't want nothing coming loose on me. Alright. Got some red Loctite on there. What am I right here? Put this through. Here, I'm gonna wrap my 
press along just like that. Tighten it down. Tight down, that's for sure. Alright. Now from here, put the two bearings in. And we'll also put some red Loctite on this part right here. Make sure it doesn't get in the bearings. Too much there. As a matter of fact, we can actually put it in here. Make this all nice and tight. back on here and then we will line up line up the marks with them holes all right that and we're just going to clean these threads. And I'm going to add ouch, some red Loctite as well. strip that, that's for sure. Well, you can see pretty much how this, this is going to run. Alright. I'm just going to put a little bit of grease on there. And then we're going to seal this up. All right, guys. So what I'm going to be doing now is we're going to be applying the grease onto the uh, gears. Um, from the factory, it already has some grease on there. All right. As you can see, the grease is actually on there. It's actually embedded in deep inside there in the, uh, the slots, right, in the gear. And um, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to be adding uh, this grease here that I got. This is brand badass, right, from Boom Racing. This is uh, black graphite grease, and this is used for pretty much all types of uh, transmission gear sets and stuff, all right, in the RC uh, rock crawler and um, RC car realm. Now, I'm going to utilize it here because this is the only grease that I got on hand at the moment. I got this one right here, um, but no, I'm going to use this one, the graphite grease. All right, I'm not going to use so much. I'm just going to kind of just layer it on just a little, you know, just to give it a little layer, a little coat. But we don't want it to be too sluggishy type deal. All right. I'm just going to do it like that. I think that should be good, to be honest. Yep. That should be good. Alright. I think that's more than enough, to be honest. Alright. So, that's that. I'm going to go ahead and cover this up. It's better have something than nothing, really, at this point. Alright. Then from here, we're going to go ahead and start putting all these parts on. All right. And take this and snap it on there as well. So remove all these screws. That way it can close up, hopefully. Okay. Let's go see what's going on here. All right, let's go open it back up. Figure out what's going on here. Yeah, we got everything all situated now. Each gear is actually in there. Yeah. So, why is it not closing? That's a good question. Hmm? basically screw this thing together all right we got that that's one let's clean up all these screws put some Loctite here that to the side now until we get to the actual part where we need to assemble that onto the aircraft oh that's pretty much the next step all right so from here we're going to be all right uh, guys so the next thing we're going to do here is we got the carbon fiber frames the side frames right this is the uh lower side frames all right this is the upper side frames all right, so we got the uh, right hand side, left hand side. All right, now left 
hand side you can see we got the uh, nomenclature here and you can see the inserts right the big side is in the back little sides up front right because when you start screwing the put the screws in here uh, if you have it the other way around it's just gonna pull straight out of the frame all right so ensure that uh, those are on the back side or inside portion all right now um, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the right hand side upper side frame all right um, first thing I'm gonna do is grab my uh, governor sensor as you can see right here I already went ahead and I attached it to the plastic doohickey thing there all right and this is going to get situated in the inside portion of the right hand frame right about there all right so um, I'm gonna turn this around I got my self tapping screws one's gonna go in here and just like so and then we're just gonna put this on and screw that on there all right so that's gonna be the first thing we're gonna do with the um, side frame assembly let's put it on the governor sensor all right now I'm gonna be utilizing that this is gonna be the governor sensor for the micro b6 plus all right Just like so. You don't want to over torque that because that is just plastic. And so this end right here would go and plug in directly into the side right here of the Micro Beast X Plus. Alright. So there you go. That's going to be that. And then from here we got the uh, main, the, uh, what you call this? upper and lower main shaft blocks all right we got it right here now there's a orientation on this all right so for the top the top block all right you want to ensure that you see how the bearing all right exposed larger in this side as to this side where it's smaller right it's only because you can remove the bearing only through one side all right so this way and so you want to ensure that uh, the top bearing is able to come out this way from the top and then the bottom bearing you want to make sure that the bearing can basically come out through the bottom so it's going to be inserted onto the frame like such all right so just make sure you don't have it like that or like this. All right, follow the instructions, self-explanatory. All right, as you can see, just let me go ahead and bring you up with the instructions. All right, as you can see right here, you can see how the bearing can be removed. It's showing that representation of that. And at the same time, the bottom bearing, you can drop it down from the bottom. All right, so you would see exactly how these two main bearing blocks are going to be attached to the side frame all right and as you can see right there we already got the uh, governor sensor attached and then all we got to do is attach the whole assembly of the transmission case right here all right and so that's basically um, getting the upper frame done all right so let's continue on all right guys so i went ahead and i just basically took care of this off camera and what it was was just basically attaching these parts onto the side frame i don't think you guys really needed to see me put the screws in all right <laughs> but anywho you can see the after effects of what i did so i installed the servo mounts all right here on the side um went ahead and got the this is 
three by ten millimeter screws, all right? Just like so. With the washer, all the screws are cleaned and then Loctite it as well in here. All right, so went ahead and attached the transmission, also the upper and lower bearing uh, main mass or bearing block type deal. All right, all right. So that is what we're going to do next. Taking care of this portion of the build, putting on the left hand side upper uh, side frame. All right, so taking off the screws on here. So this is going to go here and what I'm going to do first is just going to set all the screws on. I'm not uh, going to torque them down just yet until all of them are attached on here. Bring this one on here. All right. So we've got to get this prepared. All right. So we do need to get everything else like our tank and all this because we need uh we are going to need all these parts really we got to also assemble the tank here's our fuel tank so we got to assemble that Now, I normally don't use the uh, included fuel line. I normally get my own. Uh, and so that's what I'm going to do. To include the clunk line. Uh, the align one is, is okay. But I tend to just use the Lynx. The Lynx line, the clunk line with the uh, fuel magnet. So, so to speak. I don't know what they call it. Fuel magnet or fuel uh, clunk line instead of this clunk I'm using one of the sponge I think it's called a fuel magnet it's been a while all right all right so this is pretty much what I'm using all right now these things they work out pretty well especially if you don't you're not using a, a header tank you know uh, the downfall is if you're using muffler pressure, you get a lot of hot gases and everything like that going into the engine, or the tank and all, right? Um, I normally store, if you're utilizing this, I store the, at least the fuel tank, the main tank, uh, with a little bit of fuel in there, you know, to keep this thing nice and soaked at all times you don't want it to dry out because if you empty your tank every single time after you know you're gonna you're at the house and all that stuff and then you don't fly for like a week or so this starts to dry out you know and uh, i've seen it over time where the foam starts to deteriorate you know and stuff and starts falling apart or even go into uh the line i don't know all right so we got the Clunk on here. Should I say the fuel sponge, fuel magnet thing to do? Drum it on. Alright, so there you go. Just like that. And this will go into the tank. And you got one side for uh, the fuel, and you got the other side for the plug. All right. Just insert that. A little twist to make sure everything's on there. Same thing with 
this one. Pull that out just a slight bit. Just making sure that that's all situated in there. Okay, so for the conk line, I normally what I do is I kind of get the the fitting here, kind of start it inside that grommet, and then kind of push it down in there, almost like this at the same time, kind of locking it in while pushing. All right, because if you don't get that actually started in there, what happens is you end up pushing this grommet into the fuel tank at the same time you're pushing the main all right so yeah so just doing like that pushing it in slowly working it in and then bam just like that and i try to give it a turn I do actually have a aluminum version of this nipple. Right, I got that whole aluminum assembly, but yep, there it is. It's on there, and a fuel line in there. If it's upside down, it will get to the corner, no problem. But at the same time, it's sponge, so it always constantly have saturated a uh, um, will be um, filled with fuel, right? So that's a good thing. All right, so we got that done. All right, so next is basically putting up, installing this fuel tank guard, rubber guard thing. Just like that. Making sure it's all up in each corner, just like so. All right, so we got that. We'll do the other side, other frame, and uh, oh, underneath everything. There you go. It's gonna go on there, just like the other. Push that all through, get where it's situated there, and there you go, we got that side of the frame. And we can do the um, landing gear blocks like this, get this one actually installed to the bottom section of the frames. Anytime you got your screws going into aluminum, you want to go ahead and put Loctite, all right? Do not put Loctite from, you know, on plastic, plastic to plastic, or, you know, metal screws into plastic. Only aluminum or metal. make sure it's when you're doing that see see the top face of this make sure it's just you can 
tweak it just a little but you can see just try to get it in line with the frame as much as possible Okay, so just like that, we got those two on the left hand side frame. Now we got to do this also for the right hand side frame, but make sure you put it in the proper direction. So this one is going to go in the inside of the right hand side frame. So should I put it on now? I guess. I guess I could. Wrong side. I need to put some more lock time in here. So I'm running low. Okay, just like that. As long as we got it in there, at this point, there we go, and we're good. We're not going to tighten any of the screws down completely. Just keep it nice and loose for now. Until we have everything on. Alright. Same thing with the front. Now we can actually put this one on. Okay, there you go, just like that. Okay. We'll just kind of tighten this down. All right. We got to also put some uh, spacers through here. All right. So this one's going to have a spacer and... So it's going to go in there just like that. So, time to put some Loctite on this as well. Gonna stand this up real quick. Just get this on here. Okay. Okay. 
let's go. going on here there you go that was giving me a hard time this one also has to go on Octet in there on both sides. I know I did that earlier, but it's alright. Doesn't hurt. And this one also has a washer and a spacer. So I'm going to put the spacer and the washer in there, just like so. This one's also going to have a spacer. And one of these. Oops. like so we also got to take care of this back side here this back side is also going to be where the um, third bearing block which is this guy all right we gotta make sure we attach this Well, that one's tight. Let's clean off all these threads. Fairly clean. Some more time. Now the uh, third bearing block. Uh, faces upwards where the bearing can actually come out all right so make sure it's not down this way it's up like that all right so this is going to get inserted right here just like so working everything down just yet all right also for the rear okay Mm 
Okay. That's pretty much it for that. We also got the tailpiece and all, which will come later. This one has another one that goes in there, just like that. that which is the frame mounting bolt which is this guy Clear these threads as well Let's go ahead and attach the uh, other side of the frame. Alright, so it's going to go on here just like that. Alright. So we're going to go ahead and find some knot tight of that. I'm just going to dip it in here. side frame stiffener on here where I put that down All right. put one two and this is gonna go in there with some spacers so it's best if I just lay this down really on top of everything Slide this in position. One. And 
then we'll get this one in there too. And two. All right. This one as well. I already had Loctite on this one right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this on. Back it off a little. Alright. This one as well. This one. All right, all right. So we got all that. Okay. Ticket. This one is for that and that. I should have two more of these because we got two spacers here. We got another spacer right there. Is that it? Got all the spacers. And that's for the front. like that okay what I put my barbecue skewer spacer in all right so we're gonna go ahead and put the tank in now I went ahead and separated the uh, the frame it was my dumb butt decided to go ahead and forget about the fuel tank Yet. What I normally do as well on this is I put a little bit of triflow oil. It's pretty much on my finger. And I just kind of go around the perimeter of the fuel tank grommet thing. Right? Just real light coat. And what that's going to do is allow the fuel tank to go and insert in between this easier all right just like that and then now we can actually just take the fuel tank 
get it in there. And yeah, it should go in there fairly easy. No trouble whatsoever. Just the downfall of this is that you got that grommet. There you go, just like that. And then it just slides in. This is basically what we're going to be doing. Alright, so we've got that screw removed. We also got a washer right here in the engine. Alright. Uh, you can see that. Alright, so we got that washer. Right, that washer is going to remain there. All right, so first thing is first. Let's go and remove this. careful with that because you got some locking washers there let's go remove the actual clutch and then we got uh, we got this which holds the fan And just like with all the other screws, I'm just going to basically give it a nice cleaning. Some denatured alcohol. Or uh, you could also use um, like some thinner. Kind of clean it off. If you don't have alcohol. All right, and with that, I'm going to go ahead and apply some Loctite. I'm going to do that through here. Okay, and then we're going to take our fan. All right, you got your fan right here. This is going to face downwards like that onto the engine. And this one's going to actually get placed down like that. There you go. Just like so. Now we're going to put the screws on. center this thing as good as you can. And you're just basically aligning the holes.
thing. Give it a little torque. Just remember it's plastic, so you don't want to over torque it and then end up squeezing the plastic too much. All right. And we got some excess Loctite coming out from the back side here, so I'm just going to go ahead and wipe that off. Just like that. All right. So, washer back on. All right. Then we're just going to loosen up these screws. Uh, where's that? There we go. Make sure that's take these things off. So we've got to clean these as well. Alright, and then this is going to get placed onto the engine. And we'll see. Probably have to spread this open just a little bit. Let's go grab the pliers. If we gotta drill this out, I don't know. I don't think so. There you go. Let's push. Push down on there. And we'll go ahead and put a nut on there and torque it down. All right, so this one I'm going to actually put a red Loctite. Where did I put my red Loctite at? All right. Put some red Loctite on the threads there. socket we got all that we got that done now it's time to go ahead and place the fan shroud over the uh, assembly it's pretty much like so Just like that. And we can go ahead and now remove the engine mount because we're actually going to attach the engine to this mount. All right. Cool. Also clean these up you see we got some oils already there all right so yeah we're gonna have to clean up these threads
so you can see how how oily you really can see it how oily the uh, screws are some Loctite on here you can use red you can use blue uh, it being where the engine is at you know, you got heat and all too so uh, I'm just gonna use red Loctite on my bolts here for the engine I think I should have done the uh, fan shot after. Alright, let's go move the fan shot. Now we're going to put the fan shroud back on. Oops. All right. There you go. Now let's go clean up these screws. This one will also be, I'll have red Loctite as well for these, for the fan shroud that is a 3x10. Alright, so that's going to be these guys right here, 3x10s, and there's two full on each side. So let's go ahead and uh, situate this in here. Oh, 
I went too far, too far forward. So we're just going to install the screws for the engine block on the side. We're not going to torque it down yet. We're just going to place the screws on there, get it situated. Just finger tight for now. Just using red Loctite for this. And all right, guys, hold on real quick. All right, yeah, first day of school tomorrow, so. My daughter came in, showed me her outfit. That's so awesome. But, yeah. It is what it is. School starts tomorrow. For the kids here on the island of Guam. And so, uh,. Yeah. Bye bye summer. No more summer vacation. Oh well. Just like so. And then we can get our actual measurement so that we can be equal on both sides. this up here because I did drop some Loctite this thing in Loctite alright so this one right here is just smooth 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 alright let's go pull that out for now So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna just kind of get a idea where I want my skids to be. So uh, I'm just gonna do it like about right here, and I'm just gonna measure this one right here. So that's gonna be I'll make it about one inch at the rear. Here to there, about one inch. All right, just roughly. And from here to here, same thing. Just getting it as equal as you can. Let's make it one and one fourth. Looks nicer. It's sticking out just a little bit more. So one and a quarter is where I'm gonna put mine. Yep.
that's good. That's where I'm putting mine at. Just making sure that these things are kind of, you know, not straight. All right. Now let's go put this on. Now, when you're putting on these grub screws, once it stops stop yeah. again don't over torque it because you will strip the uh, rub screw on the plastic and then it's not going to hold your landing skid down so once you feel tension it's kind of stop all right That's it. It's just to prevent it from sliding. But don't go crazy and start torquing this one now. Once you feel the tension, just turn a little bit more and you're good. All right. Trust me, it goes a long way. And that's it. So you don't need to really torque that down, like I said. All right. So from here, Pretty much at uh, installing the electronics. All right. You know what? Throughout the years, I never had any issues with the align servos, uh, especially the high voltage ones like these. Never had any issues, to be honest. You know, just my me saying that now. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, I never had no issues, so always had good things to, you know, to say about the Align servos. You know, for one, price range is not that bad compared to the other servos out there in the market. Now, would I love to have, you know, top of the line, what everybody else is, you know, using type servos? Uh, sure. But sometimes you just got to go of what you can afford, right? <laughs> so you don't want to skimp on uh, electronics, that's for sure. But you can't complain with the super combo, you know, because you're pretty much getting everything you need for the most part of it you know now if you were to buy all this separately you're going to spend a little bit more eventually but i get it you know a lot of people don't care for the align regulator you know a lot of people don't care for the align uh, servos everybody has their own specific Go to servos, or they want to stay with everybody and stay with the trend and go with the biggest and the best, you know, which is good. Awesome stuff for those who are in the uh, competition realm, you know, for people like myself, just want to have fun. 
these are just fine. I could still uh, fly. I could still do 3D. Do you know? Enjoy my time with the helicopter, just with what you see right here. To include the old trusty Micro Beast X Plus. All right. So we are adding all the servo grommet. All right. And then also the collars as well. All right now, these collars are gonna go from the top side, basically, like this. I mean, the fact that these servos are gonna be attached to the actual airframe, like so. All right. It's gonna go in that way. So, we're going to continue putting up all the servo grommets. Alright, so we got that. This servo is going to go on here, like such. I already got, um, what you call this, uh, Loctite on here. Alright. so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Right. When you're doing these things, you don't have to over torque your servo down too. All right, once it gets tight, because you want to want to have that collar and the rubber grommets to you know do the work to absorb the absorb the uh, vibration and all that stuff all right so you don't want to you don't want to torque it down and take away all that vibration dampening thing all right but you don't want also you don't want it to be loose all right so find that happy medium all right so we got that and we're going to go ahead and take care of the other side as well. All right. Just like this. And this one is going to get attached. Same thing. All right. Move the uh, screws here. Let's go install this. Let me just grab the, uh, the flips. Just want to make sure, too, that uh, I am. This servo horns are actually tightened down.
I'm sure that I actually got this side tacky now too. This tool right here, it's been wear, wear and tear on this one, so it's slipping. So that's the reason why I went ahead with that. All right, so we got those two. Now it's time to do the rear, the elevator servo, which goes back here. All right, and this one is gonna go It goes facing rear like this. Alright. So this one's going to go on here like that. That way you can see what I'm doing here. Just like that. It's nice and tightened down. Thread lock as well, same thing. Nothing changes. Outer hole. Tighten it down. Alright. Same thing. And this one. Screws. Some not tight as well on the screw right in here, right in here, okay. So insert the servo. Oh. Said I'm not lefty, so but it is what it is. So, what I did off camera was pretty much run the fuel line, installed the grommet on each side of the frame, installed the fuel line here, installed the fuel line on this side, as you can see, that's pretty much how I got it going on. Alright. And, yeah. That's what we got, and now we're going to go ahead and take care of the installation of the 
tail boom and tail case and all that good stuff all right so from here first things first is all right the umbrella gears and everything on here it's pretty much uh this one's been all taken care of you know by the factory uh there's really not much to do here all right and uh let's see what else here yeah there's not much to do here in this one So, yeah, we're just going to go ahead and go right into the tail case. Just to make sure there's nothing on that side. Alright. Open up the actual tail case here. And once again, we got to go through all this because nothing here is completely secured all the way down to the tail blade grips and all. All right, so we want to make sure we double check everything and make sure everything is secured. All right, so we're going to basically take it apart. Uh, please. See? Everything should be fairly loose. Yeah, that's loose. Put it away. I think I did. Yep, I did. Let's try it there. Alright. So we're just going to take these things apart. As you can see, all these screws are just, there's no Loctite on there. Alright. No Loctite whatsoever. So you have to take it apart. Clean up the screws and apply Loctite all right so all this I'm going to take apart all these screws and everything and as a matter of fact we got to take this off Make sure there's no washers and stuff there. Okay. They do have inserts on this one right here. So, gotta make sure we don't lose those. Just like that. I'll put it together with that. That way we don't lose that. Got to show you as well when it's time to actually screw this onto the blade grip and we put Loctite to put the Loctite in here first. That way you don't put Loctite down in the screw and this will end up causing it to bind up, causing this to not spin freely. All right. This is just finger tight. I mean, everything here is just finger tight. So all this is we're gonna eventually put back together with Loctite. All right. 
So include all this. Everything here will be taken apart. And like I said, nothing here has Loctite on it. So we have to take everything apart. I know I keep saying that, right? But you're going to have somebody who would think it's all together, go out and fly it, heli falls apart, and they blame it on the quality of the heli. You know? Okay. There we go. Make sure there's no... You got your gear set there. Bearing, all that. Alright, and you got this inner screw here to hold this. That's not even Loctited as well. Alright, so. Oh, I might be lying. That one actually feels like it was Loctited. But since I already broke it, I mean, uh, you know, unscrewed it. Yep. See, that one actually has Loctite. So I'm going to have to put, clean up the threads here and then apply Loctite again. At least we know that one had Loctite. Alright. So now we put Loctite back on. Alright. Now we gotta go through all this. And remember, no Loctite on the uh, locking washers. Or locking nuts. Because that's plastic. Alright. Pretty much a Loctite free. And on this one, we're going to go ahead and put some grease on the uh, thrust bearings, making sure that we reinstall the thrust bearing in the same direction that we took it out. Alright. And if you are, oh, let's see, it does have some grease in there. I don't know if you can see it. can't see it well that's grease that's for sure but I'm gonna go ahead and put more Okay. 
Okay. And then we put some Loctite. I'm going to use red on this one. Because this is blade grip thing. Alright. So I went ahead and I used some Loctite on there. Now what we're going to do is clean the threads up. So I'm going to go ahead and get some clean the threads for the blade grip screw alright so we're going to do that to both So we got Loctite down in there already, as you can see on this side as well, we got Loctite in there. I'm not putting Loctite on the screw itself and then putting it in there, all right? I'll just put Loctite directly inside in the threads first. And that way, when I'm screwing this in, it's not going to come out and go into the uh, thrust bearing, all right? Technically the Loctite is getting pushed further in into the threads all right so that's why I'm doing that go ahead and uh, tighten this down just a little bit okay that's torqued down still spins freely so we're good I already put Loctite in there I don't know if you can see it uh, it's in there and so we got to take out this thrust bearing here. There we go. And I'm going to add more grease to this one. Since we got everything disassembled, might as well. It's not going to hurt. Then we will put it back in. All right. There you go. Reassemble it. Put the screw on and torque it down. also smooth they both turn freely so we're good there now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put Loctite in here on the arms all right all right so we went ahead and I finished up the reassembly of the whole tail assembly right so everything here basically all the screws have been clean and Loctited everything runs smooth progressively going working your way out you know to ensure that you don't have any binding whatsoever when you're putting this back together and so when i took this thing apart when i put it back together i did it in sections right and every time i tighten everything down i move that item to see if everything moves freely and so far everything was moving good all the way down to the blade grips all right so that's the reason why it's so smooth all right and there's no drag whatsoever. Everything is just nice. All right. And so from here, we got all that done. We got the thrust bearings on there. And now it's time for the tail boom and the torque tube and all that stuff. All right. So let's go ahead and put this back on. So we're not going to put the uh, we're not putting the blade grip uh, blades on here yet. The tail blades that'll be like the last thing, but we will put this on here for now so we don't lose these nuts and bolts. All right, so we're just going to put that to the side to include the actual tail case, tail 
case gear set, whatever you want to call. And uh, I'm going to put my cover here. All right. So get the tail boom section, which is this big pack. Yeah. All right. Tail boom, tail boom, tail boom. So this one has your tail boom. This is a carbon fiber tail boom. If not mistaken, no. Nope. Well, it looks carbon fiber. Well, I think it's uh. No, nope, it's aluminum, but it has a carbon fiber look to it, which is pretty cool. Yeah. It's aluminum. Anywho, we got that. We got our torque tube. All right, and this is just your housing. You don't need that. Um, if I'm not mistaken, this is used to also set your uh, bearing. All right. Uh, yep. I believe so. Anywho, all right, so we got the bearings. All right, want to make sure that uh, this should be already attached by the factory. You know, your torque tube ends here, so ain't nothing much you got to do there. All right, we got your servo push rod guide and um, push rod itself, all right. And your tail balloon supports, which there's nothing to do here. All right, so we're just gonna put this to the side. All right, what we need to get is We need to obtain the rubber. There it is. This is for the bearing. This is the bearing holder for the torque tube. And also your control rod guide. Take this and kind of push it over the bearing itself. Oh, we're not gonna do that yet. My bad. We gotta actually glue that in. And so, uh, with that, use thin CA. Alright. Tells you basically the uh, how far in. So from one side here, it's going to be two hundred and sixty five millimeters. All right, so from this end. 265 millimeters in. It's pretty much where this is going to be at. All right. So let's go take out the calipers and see if this thing can go up to 200 and 265 millimeters, which is 
This goes up to 155. Was it? 265? Alright. So, 265 millimeters from this end in. Alright. And so, my caliper could go only up to 155. So, I'll make it so we're just gonna double that, half that. 165 divided by two is what? 132.5. So 132.5 or 132 and a half. Uh, come on. There you go. So 132.5. All right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start right there. And then right here, go right there. So it's gonna be right here. And I'll put a scratch on there, just like that. All right, and then same thing with this side. So it's 132.5 right here to here. And then I'll just go ahead and put a scratch right here. That way I know where it's at. And in between the two, right, the two marks that we made, should be roughly about 132. Right, should be 132. Should be another 265, so. So from here to here. And there to that mark. Where's the mark? There it is. Yeah, it's roughly in between. Alright, so where did I put the mark? That's right there. And this mark is right here. So that's pretty much where that's going to be. 265 Yeah. That's that. That's 265 millimeters from each end. Here to here. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean that up. Some denatured alcohol or some thinner. All well, depends on what you got. All right, so since I had a scratch mark there, you can't really see. Uh, I won't be taking nothing off. And we've got a scratch mark here, so I'm just going to clean that off just like that. Alright. And so, let that dry. And what we'll do is basically take some thin CA, put a drop of thin CA, let it go around, and then we'll just slide this on, just like that. Alright. Just the Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and apply some thin CA right there, 
just kind of let it kind of do that. I'm gonna slide this on just like so. Do the same thing on this side. Just like that. Slide it on there just like so. Let that completely cure. And by doing it that way, we ensure that we don't get any CA inside the bearing. If you get CA in the bearing, it's going to end up seizing up on you. And it's going to be a. going to end up having to change that bearing out. So far, so good. Still smooth. That's why you don't put too much CA. Because even if you if you put drop on the torque tube and then you put too much and you slide that thing too quick, eventually all that CA will go inside the groove there. All right, so you want to put just a thin layer and then slide it on there slowly. All right. We got the uh, digital calipers. All right, like I said, I'm just going to set this to the side here, let that cure, and then we're just in the meantime. Let's go ahead and take this and get this started. Um, okay, this one is about 330 millimeters from one end. Three hundred and thirty from this side. All right, there should be a groove in there. Yep, it's right there. Oops. There you go. It's a notch that has to go in there. So three hundred and thirty millimeters. So right there, just rough estimate really, so 330 millimeters from that right here, back. And eventually that's all going to get, uh, you know, like I said, it doesn't have to be spot on. Because you, you will still have to go ahead and take the, um, your uh, rudder control rod. And you're going to end up having to glue this 
onto this carbon fiber piece. I have seen, all right, <laughs> I don't know, but I have seen somebody, a few, actually glue this part to the guide, right? They glued it into the guide where the the, the control rod was moving back and forth in, you know, in this sliding like that. It's not supposed to be that way, all right? <laughs> This is just your guide, right? This needs to be actually CA to the control rod. And the movement, when the servo moves, it would only go so far. It will not ever pass like such, all right? So when you move your servo, it should only move, you know, within this range on the aluminum part. Now, I, like I said, I've seen guys where they, they didn't glue this to the actual control rod. They actually glued it to the guide and left this thing sliding back and forth like that. That's a no-go. All right. So, it is what it is. All right. So, once again, still free. I'm just gonna go ahead and just wait until the CA really cures before we go ahead and pop, you know, pop that in there. All right. So, in the meantime, let's see what else we can do. We can go ahead and start situating the screws on this right here. All right. All right. This one doesn't require any Loctite because these are just going directly into some. Um, locking nuts like this all right so no need any loctite on these locking nuts all right so the locking nuts will go in on one side just like that Sure. And then we got um, screws for this one is three by fourteen millimeter. I'm sorry. So let's go look for the fourteen millimeter screws here. And where's my ruler? Let's go fourteen millimeters. That's uh, 10, nope, that's not it. That's 20. So 14 millimeters. I don't see no 14 millimeters. Am I missing something? No. Hello. Let me see. Three by fourteen. something here. All right, so I'm putting the rubber 
over the bearing on the torque tube. All right, just like that. Situating that rubber around that bearing, just like that. All right, still spins freely. Awesome stuff. All right. Alright, there we go. Bearings all in there. Alright, now we're gonna go ahead and uh put that down into the torque tube. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of grease, not grease but oil down into you can put it on the torque tube uh the, the rubber or you can actually put it down in the uh the boom all right i'm just gonna put a little bit of trifle oil on the rubber all right and what this is going to do is just going to make it easier for this to uh slide into the tail boom without grabbing Right, because if it grabs, it's going to eventually pull this rubber boot off of the bearing, and that's what you do not want. All right, so just like that, and we're going to go ahead and insert this through one end, kind of squeeze the boot so it can enter. All right. And just like that, slide it in. As you can see, we got oil there. I'll put a bit more. Just like that. And this is where uh, that clear tube, this clear tube right here, can help push this in there. gonna go ahead and situate this as well just like that we can put the tube through and help push it in all right now we got to the end we have to now make it go inside the groove of the front gear this one right here so the front of the uh, torque tube has been properly inserted into the crown gear. So there you go. There we go, just like that. All right. From here, we can insert this down. We can go ahead and tighten this up a little. No, we can do that once we situate everything because we still need to go ahead and put, uh, matter of fact, we still need to put the links on here. that side ok 
Okay. Go ahead and insert this there. We can tighten that later. Alright, next is the uh where did I put it? Where did you go? This we got our actual carbon fiber fin. We got our horizontal fin and our clamp stabilizer mount, if you will, just like that. This one, we'll take this off. This one, we're going to clean the threads as well. Also, got to put Loctite there. Remove this. Threads. Oops. Keep grabbing the wrong one. Okay. This one. Also, before we do that, we're going to also put some uh, some tape around the boom. I'm just going to use some uh, scotch tape right here. All right. We're just going to put one layer, and that's just to prevent the aluminum from sliding within here. All right. So, before we do that, we're going to have to uh, figure out where that location is going to be and right now at this point we have to situate the tail boom support So on this one will go right in here in between and at the time I'll go ahead and add some uh, Loctite here and in here. Alright, put that to the side there. And we get our boom supports. Go ahead and I'll put it where the align is, the align logo is facing outwards, just like that. Right. Do that. Okay. Okay, so went ahead and I installed that. Uh, unfortunately, my phone ran out of memory, so it is what it is. All right, guys, so we're going to go ahead and install the uh, muffler. Now, this is a brand spanking new um, Power Boost muffler, or what was it, Funtech? All right, 
what OS is going with. But uh, regardless what it is, this is brand new, four years old, still in the box. However, comma, I did use the um, the gasket, the nipple, and the screws four years ago when I installed it onto my first NX7 with the 91HZ engine and 90 uh, power boost pipe. All right. Well, I don't have that now. I was looking online to purchase some, uh, but apparently didn't have any. So I'm gonna go old school, and I am going to do the um, RTV, red RTV. So what I did to prepare this is I went ahead and I cleaned this with uh, denatured alcohol or you could also clean it with all right so we're putting basically RTV on here and we're not gonna do it we're not gonna put a lot all right very little little thin thin layer so it's near towards the end, really. If you put too much, uh, it's just all gonna squeeze out. Right, so don't even bother. And then you might have the chance of it uh, when you when you tighten it down, it squeezes and it squeezes inside the actual muffler. All right. So uh, some is it's gonna thin in no matter what you do. Uh, but if you put a real thin layer. It'll prevent, uh, prevent, prevent all that excess from going inside. So as you can see, I'm cleaning out the uh, hole area here, all right? So it's all nice and clean. As you can see, just a real thin layer. As a matter of fact, it could get thinner. This is what uh, well, most of the guys are doing back in the day. I know I was doing this. When you're a member of, uh, what was it? Heli Freak and uh, Run Rider and all that stuff. Kind of pick up, especially Raptor techniques back in the day. Pick up a lot of good tips. Well, I still use them tips today, so it is what it is. All right, so we got the uh, got that on there now. I went ahead and I cleaned the bolts, the screws for the muffler. I'm just looking for where I put the other one at. Model. I'm getting old. I can't remember where I put stuff sometimes. Hello? Where did you go? Ah, right there. Okay. I went ahead and I cleaned off the threads as well on these. Alright. Um, put some red Loctite on there. Now, depending on how hot the engine gets, it might, you know, loosen up the red Loctite. I mean, if it gets that hot, which I don't plan to ever run my engine that hot, however, comma, you can use that, or you could also use um, E6000 or Goop, you know, uh, on these bolts. It'll work either way. But the main thing is don't put too much. Uh, you don't really need to kick this on. Right. More is not merrier in this case. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to 
gonna start it off with my bowl and driver. started in there. Probably can still finish this off here. a few lines so I'm gonna just cut that off and uh, make it the bare 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 minimum right there so just about right here just like that yeah that's good enough but yeah that's that um still gotta route all the uh wires the electronics and everything i'm gonna take care of that eventually but as far as the main assembly of the heli that is pretty much a wrap on the main assembly still got to go ahead and put the grommets on the canopy uh, install the blades and all that stuff but why install the blades now when i'm going to end up having to remove it um, because it's going to be in the way when i start trying to about all these wires and stuff. Alright, but other than that, that's what we got going on here. So, yep, receiver battery, receiver, Beast X, all that. Pretty much from here on out is electron. Alright, guys, so the online T Rex 700 XN main assembly is complete. All that is left is basically just wiring up all the electronics, um, installing the flat bar dish unit, regulator, and plug in the servos and set everything all up. That's pretty much all that's left. So, um, yeah, this thing can actually start flying tomorrow. I'll start setting that up tonight. But here it is the Line TX 700XN. Cool beans. To get into the receiver connection thing, right? It says receiver. Receiver type, right? You got standard off. Standard meaning pretty much hooking up 
your receiver just like so. All right, you're utilizing the included wires and all, all right, to have this basically as your standard receiver uh, type deal. All right, and then you got, you know, if you got JR, you know, remote satellite, Spectrum remote satellite, Fataba S bus, if you're using Fataba S bus, and so on and so forth. All right, so how to get into that? That's the most important part. Otherwise, you will never be able to move forward because you can't connect. Um, you're gonna you're gonna see nothing but the light, just basically going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth throughout all the letters. It's just gonna keep scrolling, and it's not gonna lock in and all that stuff. That is basically a sign that you got no connectivity to um, the receiver. All right, you didn't pick the proper uh, right receiver format in other words all right so since i'm using fataba and i'm using the full wire setup i'm going to have this set as regular standard which is you shouldn't see any led here all right so how to get into that you hold down the button you power it on you will see the light blink you let it go all right now you are in the setup for the selection of whatever receiver type you're doing. All right. So to get and choose the receiver type, it's all about holding the button down. There's nothing to do with the radio at this point. All right. So let's see. Let's go scroll through here. All right. I don't know if we could do it both at the same time like this. All right. So you see it's off. Let's say I want to do um, Fataba S bus. You see it says flashing red, all right? So you hold the button down, you let it go, all right? As you see, that is uh, flashing purple. So technically that is JR, remote satellite. If you don't want that one, you hold the button down, let it go, and you see, it's purple solid all right and that is spectrum remote satellite all right let's go hold the button down again you'll see the light change to red flashing all right holding the button let it go red flashing that is fataba s bus all right and then so on so on all right so i want to have it under normal standard receiver so i shouldn't have any led flashing or solid during this portion all right so i'm gonna go back hold the button down let it scroll through there you go no led light that means i am using a standard receiver right in other words, it's in this configuration. I'm utilizing the three wire here, the elevator and aileron uh, servo leads, all right, or extensions. All right. So now we can go ahead and basically turn it off. And when you turn on your radio and you turn on your um, B stacks or the switch for the regulator it should go directly through the whole sequence and lock on to your receiver you see how it just jumped boom there you go so now I am connected my B stacks is actually connected to my Fataba receiver standard version all right same thing if you're going to utilize S bus and all that stuff, you have to choose the proper receiver format that you're going to be utilizing. All right. So that's how you get into that. So from here, now that you got, you know that you're connected, now you can go ahead and set up your uh, orientation direction. All right. For your receiver. Now, since I got this on the align 
700XN. The receiver, the gyro is going to be placed right here on this particular spot. And I'm going to have the socket, which is where all the wires plug into, facing towards the rear like that. So this is going to be facing forward of the helicopter. All right. So all my wires are going to come through the backside. So I have to look at the diagram here to see what LED light that would be. All right, so this is the front of the helicopter. I need to see where the socket is facing towards the rear and flat like that, all right? So just by looking at this, and I'm seeing that, that right there will be the same representation as how I want this thing to be situated on the heli. And so the status LED off, all right? So how do we get in that? All right, so if you got your cheat sheet, cheat card type deal, all right? Let's go see where it says orientation. All right, you see right there, it says device orientation. It says menu LED solid, all right? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna Hold down the button. It's going to blink, 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 blink. Keep holding it. Solid. Let it go. All right. Now it's automatically on letter A, which is letter A is device orientation. All right. Now you see I don't have any LED on here. Now if I had any specific orientation, I would have the corresponding LED. So however you have your fly bars unit attached to the helicopter, these will be specifically the lights or LED that will represent that position. All right. So how do you get into that? How do you change that? All right. You utilize the rudder. You utilize the rudder stick. There you go. All right. So as you can see, we got the flashing purple. That is for basically socket up front type deal. If I want a red flashing, you just basically cycle through with the rudder stick. All right. So either or, doesn't matter which direction you go. You're just going to be cycling through the LEDs. All right. So if I want it solid blue, I just keep cycling until it is solid blue. All right. And solid blue is, as you can't see it here, is blurry. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm not all high tech when it comes to cameras and stuff. But anywho, so, yep. Yeah. So since I'm going to be utilizing this right here, where the socket is facing to the rear of the helicopter, it has no LED status on. So I'm going to scroll until I see no LED on the indicator uh, LED section here. All right. And then once you got that done, you can go ahead and just get out of that. I'll just turn it off and it'll automatically save that. All right. So those are the basically the uh the two important parts of this there's another important part which is do not plug in any of your servos until you um choose the proper frequency and pulse rate all right so we'll get into that here shortly but the first thing is first is pretty much selecting the proper receiver format uh, so that you can have connectivity to your uh, fly barless unit through your receiver all right, but once again, make sure that you have your receiver bounded or connected to your transmitter prior to. Otherwise, you know, you're not going to be able to connect regardless. All right, so once you ensure that you have connectivity between your receiver and your transmitter, if it's bounded by spectrum or you choose the proper protocol under uh, Fataba, you know, and all that stuff, you're good to go. And then from there, it's just a matter of choosing the uh, proper uh, receiver 
format all right and then choose the proper lights so that's that and then choosing the proper orientation this is another important part otherwise y'all if you got it in the wrong direction you're gonna your heli might go hay bonkers all right because it thinks it's forward but you got your your gyro backwards and all that stuff all right so just make sure you got those two parts of the setup done once you get that everything else is pretty much easy especially utilizing this cheat card all right and i'll we'll go through everything i'm going to show you exactly how i got you know to set up the actual helicopter based on the beast x and i'm telling you it's easy once you get the hang of it you know so everybody tends to want to trash the uh the beast x and micro beast x and all that stuff but i'm telling you you see how easy that was it was just plain and simple all right guys so all right guys so what we're going to do now is pretty much select the frequency and pulse rate for your swash plate servos which is your cyclic and also your rudder all right and so we're going to do this by turning on your transmitter we're going to turn on the beast x let it initialize and all that all right All right, so now we'll get into it. Now to get into the swash plate servo update rate, right? Which is, you know, numbers here. You have to ensure that you get the specs for your servo that you're utilizing. In this case, I'm using, using the uh, Align DS820M for the cyclic and the DS825M for the rudder, which is the DS820M frequency is 333 uh, hertz, and then the pulse rate is 1520. And for the 825M for the rudder, same frequency is 333, and the pulse rate is 1520. All right, so as you can see here, um, for like a swash plate it goes up to 200 and so we'll see all right so to get into that it says right there on the top menu led solid all right right there so you have it all turned on you basically press and hold the button blinking 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 wait until it hits solid then let it go same uh parameter that you got into when you did the orientation of the gyro all right the only thing now is that we're going to go instead of letter a which was orientation we're going to go to letter b which is swash plate servo all right so you will basically push the button down one time all right led status right here all right which is blue and let's, just, let's go see what solid blue is, which is 200. All right, let's go see what we and how to scroll through there to choose the uh, color code. Basically, is utilizing your rudder stick. All right, so you'll basically do that. You know, scroll through there, and you can see it says right now it's on red solid. Red solid is uh, 120 hertz. All right scrolling through once again red blinking is or flashing is 65 hertz all right so once again just going to continue scrolling through and like i said um the 825 or 820m for uh, a line is actually 333 hertz so uh i only got up to 200 here which is blue solid So I'm going to go ahead and uh, look that up again, make sure, uh, I want to make sure that uh, I can use just 200, you know, not too sure, I'll have to check. All right, but anyhow, that's pretty much how you get into that. All right, and then 
let's say that is the uh, the setting for that. We need to go now to rudder, rudder pulse, and then you got your rudder rate. All right, so C, you basically hit the button until you get to C. So next one, there you go. And now you're on C. And the LED status on that is solid blue. And what is C? Solid blue is 1520. All right. So the pulse rate 1520. And that is the correct pulse rate for the 825M. Now, once again, if you need to change the pulse rate for the servo that you got, all right and you need to change it to 760 or 960 all you have to do is pretty much use your rudder stick to scroll through the different led uh parameters or lights all right so blue solid is what i need for this one all right so there you go blue solid there you go so now we're going to go to D, which is rudder servo update rate, which is basically your pulse rate, right? Which is for the 825 is 333 hertz, right? So right there is 333, blue flashing. All right. So we're going to go to D, push the button down. Now we're on D. Oh, it's already there. Blue flashing. All right. Now, like I said, if you need to change the uh, parameter from from um, 333 to 560 to 70, you know, all that based on your servo, you just utilize the rudder stick and change the LED to the actual servo that you got. All right. So in my case, it's blue flashing. All right. And then from there. You can just basically get out of here. Uh, I'll just scroll all the way to the end and then call it done. All right. Turn it off and it's pretty much safe. All right. So that's pretty much that. So now I got the pulse rate and the uh, frequency set up for the servos. I just got to double check on that uh, swatch plate. Um, update rate all right because I believe I believe the 824 cyclic is uh, 200 200 basically uh, hertz uh, let's double check again so let me go ahead and check that real quick all right guys so I just confirmed that basically through the um, beast X uh, servo uh, listing all right, so for the um, DS820M, uh, pulse rate is 1520, all right? And then you, if you're utilizing that servo for um, your cyclic, then it's 200 hertz. If you're utilizing it for rudder, then it's 333, all right? So since I'm us using that for the cyclic, since it's under the... Uh, B, right, which is swash plate servo rate, it's going to be blue solid 200, which is that's where it's at right now. All right, so that's that. Um, yeah, other than that, uh, higher refresh rate, you know, yeah, I guess it's uh, if you can use the 333, I don't see if blue flashing is 333 on this one, it just shows blank. So I think for swash. 200 is it all right so yep 200 is so we got that pretty much situated so i got the pulse rate and the frequency uh set for the servos that's on the heli you know based on the parameters and all that stuff and the specifications for the each servo so now you can go ahead and unplug all this or turn it off and now you can actually plug in the servos into your beast x all right but do not plug it in if you did not set that properly 
if you did not set your pulse rate your frequency and, and you just plugged in your servo and you're gonna do it while it's plugged in I advise you to go ahead and uh, have it unplugged just like how we got it right so that your servo is not plugged in there while you're trying to select the proper parameters all right only until after now what is it gonna do if it is plugged in there I'm not too sure you know I don't know what's gonna do internally to the servos or whatnot if anything uh, but that is basically uh, what I have read and through the um, beast X instruction manual a while back or years ago I don't know if it's still in effect today um, I'm not going through all that I do know however if depending on what firmware you're utilizing especially the newest ones like the 5.2 uh, 5.0 um, some of these parameters here are flopped or you know changed up so you got to ensure that uh, you're utilizing the right cheat card you know uh, for your version because if you're utilizing let's say 4.2 and you actually have a 5.0 or 5.2 firmware um, somewhere around here it's gonna be different all right uh, I can't remember which one it was I think it was K and uh, M or something like that it was flopped or something but utilize the right uh, card for your own firmware all right so I'm gonna go ahead all right so for the tail gyro rudder servo limit all right so we got it on E I'm gonna utilize my rudder on the transmitter and I'm going to go to the right until it hits and then back it off a little bit let the gyro initialize that and then we'll go the opposite direction using the rudder stick right when it hits back it off a little bit and there you go that is set the servo rudder servo limit is set so we're gonna go all the way to f f is your gyro compensation or your gyro um control right is when the heli is weather vaning or um uh, flying around or hover stationary whatever uh if the wind's blowing let's say and the, the heli's moving left the gyro will compensate and give a little bit of right um rudder so that it can keep the tail and the heli nice and straight during flight all right and so on my setup when i give left rudder the arm will push this control rod to the rear causing the pitch of the tail blades to deflect causing the nose to go to the left meaning left rudder all right and so if i were to hold the heli and continue giving it left rudder or pushing it to the left right not right but left my gyro should compensate and give it right rudder so in other words for right rudder on my setup is the, the servo going forward so if i keep turning the heli left you see the servo arm going forward meaning it's giving the correct compensation all right so we're set there we don't have to make no changes all right if you need to make any changes there's only two changes which is normal and reverse all right so if you do need to make a change just go ahead and toggle through your uh, rudder stick all right and so we're done with that we're going to go directly to g which is the swash plate um servo trim we're just going to click the button go to g now this is very important this step all right this step right here will set your tone for the rest of the setup all right so here what I like to do is mechanically set everything. So instead of going directly and start using the radio to make all your trims and all that stuff, I want to ensure that my servos, the servo arm is as centered as possible on the spline. However, the servo and the servo arm allows you to get as center as possible. All right, sometimes you, it, it'd be like one, one spline off, you know, from center. But hey, if that's what it's going to be, then it's going to be that, right? But so far, I was able to put all these arms on center, 90 degrees, all right? And then you see the swash plate, right? And then you see the, the followers up here, the follower arms up here, right? All this is all basically 90 degrees. The arms are in line of each other. They're straight, all right? And then 
all the servo arms are 90 degrees and then you can adjust all your linkages based off that now you can go based off the manual and measure you know just to get a rough estimate of where you need to put make your links up all right and then from there you can fine tune it right <coughs> excuse me and so we always start from the servo up all right so i start my servo arms being 90 degrees and then i work make sure that the follower arms are pretty much straight and then from there we can go ahead and start lengthening or shortening your three cyclic servo arms all right and then from there once from here up is all 90 your swash plate is 90 degrees it's straight forward back after and all that other stuff you're good to go from there we got our main blade grips so on the top of the main head block we got these tick marks and also on the blade grip there's a tick mark here so if you line that that should be pretty much zero degrees pitch well not in, in that's basically what it's supposed to be for all right so you can use that as your basis and then go ahead and lengthen or shorten your uh your pitch arm uh controlling right to get it to where those two tick marks um link up and match all right so i'm just gonna bring you up here so you see that all right so those are the tip the tick marks i'm talking about all right so it is as close as it's gonna be right now if not perfect all right and then from there you get your pitch gauge now this is where you can fine tune each servo if you need be all right so let's say you couldn't get the servos 90 degrees and you know it's the arm is one off so you can cycle through each servo by utilizing your rudder stick. So you see right here, you see the servo jumping. So every time that servo jumps like that right here, okay, that's my uh, elevator, I mean my aileron servo moving, that's my elevator servo moving, and that's my um, pitch servo moving, all right? So you can individually adjust these servos all right to fine tune all that the main thing is pretty much just getting everything 90 degrees all the way up to zero pitch once you get that you're good to go you can move on all right so from here um, you can use a swash leveler if you have that if you don't then just basically eyeball it to the best of your ability if you want you can use like a ruler to measure from here to there and all um, the best thing is to get it mechanically set and then fine-tune it to the best that you can do um, making everything 90 degrees and all that in all at the end will just make the gyro work less hard right because everything is all nice and, and, and easy you know everything's all straight if you got something crooked here you, you know it's and the gyro has to really compensate throughout the whole flight you know then you just make the gyro work that much harder than what it's really supposed to be doing all right so enough of that so we got that everything is good here uh what i like to do is uh i look for a, a flat spot on my frame and then we'll zero the pitch digital pitch gauge out all right it's zero 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 go ahead and put that on and we'll double check make sure that we are at zero degrees pitch and as it stands right now I am zero zero point four in other words I need to adjust this link arm over here just by turning the arm a little all right it's not going to be much, it's very little on the turn. But I want to try to do this from this side, which is pretty hard. I need to go on the other side. All right, so we'll turn that. Zero, 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 point zero. All right. Let's go do the other All right. Zero, zero, point zero. That one was good. All right, so we got that blades are zero degrees. 
um, 90 degrees, the following up, follow arms, swash plate is pretty much straight, level, you know, forward, back, left to right, and servo arms are 90 degrees. So we're good to go. All right, so moving on. I didn't have to make any adjustments, so we're good. But if you did, you know, you like I said, um, scroll through your with your um, your rudder stick and make the fine adjustments per servo if you need. All right, but always do all your adjustments. Try to do it, you know, mechanically first. All right. So we're now we're gonna go G to H. So H is your swash plate mixing type which is 90 degree ccpm 120 ccpm or 140 this is 120 so um that will be the red light right now we're still on the red light solid light so we're good to go we don't need to make any adjustments now if you do need to make any adjustments you know for the particular helicopter you know um, set up then you can basically scroll by utilizing your rudder stick so by move my rudder stick left or right it will scroll through the different uh, LED lights for the given CCPM uh, that you have on your heli so 90 degrees is flashing red light 120 is solid red and 140 is flashing blue so we need solid red all right so there you go solid red moving on all right so I is swash plate servo direction all right so from here we're just gonna ensure that our servo travel is going into the right direction based off your transmitter all right so if i go positive pitch you know my blades need to move as such if i go negative my blade should go negative so positive negative so that is correct if i give forward elevator the swash should go forward if I give back elevator, the back swash should go back. And if I give left aileron, right aileron, it would also move in the proper direction. So back elevator, forward elevator, left aileron, right aileron. So based on this, mine is going exactly what it's supposed to do. Now, if it is not, let's go, I'll show you for an example here. Um, right now, so if I go positive pitch, as you can see, my servo is my swash plate is moving completely hay bonkers right if i go forward elevator what is it doing it's not doing anything it's supposed to be doing right so if that is not right what you need to do is move your rudder stick to traverse to the next program right and then try it again all right so as you see my aileron moves in the right direction but it's opposite so if i give left it's going right if i give right it's going left if i give elevator it's actually doing the pitch and if i give pitch it's moving elevator all right so that's wrong so we're gonna click again your rudder and try it again so now elevator is going back and forth just like it's supposed to left and right ailerons that's just like it's supposed to and up and down elevator i mean a uh, pitch so positive pitch meaning the training edge is going down negative pitch training edge facing up all right so that's pretty much it's correct on my side here now <clears throat> there's going to be times where you get you get proper elevator proper aileron but when you go positive pitch your training edge is going the wrong direction or you're going you're going positive on your radio but it's giving negative all right there's no other setting scrolling through the rudder um, mode here that's going to get that to move properly without affecting the other controls all right so right now we are in the correct parameter it's just we need to go into our channel six or our pitch channel and reverse it so that we can get the pitch to move in correlation with the, the actual throttle stick or pitch stick right so you just go into the radio and you go in reverse all right so we're moving on so uh j is the swash plate servo throw all right, so this is where we're going to set the six degree cyclic pitch on the um, row axis. All right, so from here, we still have our pitch gauge on there. 
um, what we're going to do is we're going to um, move the aileron stick left or right until we get six degrees reading on our pitch gauge. All right. So we're going to continue moving, moving until you get six degrees. And right now it's 5.9, 6.0. All right. So I got 6.0. My LED status is blue. So I'm in the right range. There's going to be times where you go six degrees and your LED status is red. Based on the instructions, they tell you to look for the blue status light at six degrees. Now, if you can't get six, the, the blue status light, try going the opposite direction on the um, stick. So if you went left or let's say right, you use the right aileron to get the six degrees and you got red light, try going left aileron six degrees and see if that get, becomes blue. If not, then somewhere within your... Um, your 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 mechanical setup here is a little off all right so go back to g and get everything here centered and 90 degrees and then try it again all right moving on so we got uh we got that six degrees so now we're going to go to our actual um collective pitch so this is where we're going to set our negative and positive pitch all right, so I want 12 degrees. So we're gonna go here and I want positive first, or it doesn't matter, positive or negative, but get there. So I got positive, and then I'm going to use my aileron stick to move and adjust my pitch at positive to 12 degrees, or even 12.5, all right? So I think 12.5 is good. All right, then I'm gonna go to my negative, and I'm also gonna try to get 12.5, if not 12.5 itself. Uh, sometimes you, you'll be one you know, number off, but it is what it is, as long as you're close. All right, so 12.5 here, a negative, and then 12.5 and positive. All right, so we're 12.5, that is my pitch range. All right, so we're good there, and that is your K. Now, L is your servo limit. All right, so we go to L, and this is where you're going to adjust the amount of throw your servo um, basically can give, right? So you use your aileron or elevator. So aileron, peg it all the way, and then use your, your uh, rudder stick to give full travel right and then back it off a little right because you, you don't want it to bind at positive pitch or negative pitch you got to double check make sure nothing is hitting because you don't want to burn out your servos now right so i'm going to back this aileron off just a little because it was hitting the side of that servo all right there you go nothing on my aileron is hitting so that's my max all right so now we're going to go elevator all right so right now that is fully maxed it's touching the servo arm is hitting the uh tail case back there so i gotta move it up a little all right and nothing is hitting up here nope we're good here i probably can dumb it down just a little there you go all right so you don't want no binding you don't want anything hitting you know that will cause you to burn up your servo or servos all right so that's my full deflection and then from there we're going to go directly to m which is the uh, swash plate gyro direction all right so we click m now from here this is where if you tilt the heli back you see the swash it'll go forward if you tilt the heli forward the swash should tilt back all right so forward swash goes back back swash goes forward if you go left, swash should go right. If you go right, swash should go left. All right, so that's basically uh, counter reacting the torque or the uh, the movement, right? So right now, we're good to go. Now, I'm gonna show you what happens if it's wrong. So if I tilt the heli back, you see the swash going back the same way. 
if I tilt the heli forward, you see how the swash is tilting forward. And if I tilt left, the swash is tilting left and the swash is tilting right, which is wrong. If you were to fly like that, your heli will go hay bonkers and pretty much crash right off the bat. All right. So double check that. Now, if it is wrong, cycle through utilizing rudder. Right. There's different light setup as well on that. And then from there, try it again. All right. So forward is nope. That's still wrong. Now my aileron is correct, but my forward and back is wrong. So I'm going to cycle through again. All right. Try it again. Okay. Back goes forward. Forward is back. Now my aileron is wrong. All right. So cycle that again. One more. Back. Forward. See? Forward. Swash goes back. Left. My swash goes right. Right, my swash goes left. So here we're correct. All right, so we're done. All right, so that's pretty much the whole setup minus getting into N. N is for the um, uh, internal RPM governor. All right, so if I click, since um, I am on S bus, if I click this button right now, I should go directly to N. All right, there you go. So that's on N now. All right. Now on N, it's either governor off, which is no LED, or uh, red LED is for electric helicopters, and blue LED is for gas or nitro. All right, so basically I'm toggling uh, through, there you go, that is blue. If I toggle the rudder stick again, that is red, right, which is electric helis, and off, meaning governor is not on, not active, right? I am not going to set the governor at this point. I'm not gonna activate the governor at this uh, given moment until I run in the engine, break it in and all that stuff. And then we'll go ahead and take care of that. So I went ahead and I clicked the button, clicked out of it. All the parameters, the, 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 uh, your setup has been saved and we're ready to rock and roll, ready to go put some fuel in and go give the heli uh, an engine, you know, break in. All right. And so with that said, um, the other thing I didn't touch on yet is also I did this off camera, which was, I did the travel uh, endpoints for my carburetor, my throttle. All right. So that's something that you need to do, uh, separate. All right. So just make sure that your trim is all the way down got no trim engaged and then do your actual travel adjustment go to your endpoints pop your links off make sure that your carb is completely open and cl uh, closed and then you know do all your your endpoints to ensure that your servo is not pulling trying to pull past uh, max because then you're just gonna burn out your throttle servo all right and so we got that that's good to go um, I did that off camera. All right. As you can see, this is pretty much my setup. Now, um, the other menu, this is the reason why I, I like the Beast, all right, is because we don't need a laptop. We don't need USB cable. We don't need any, you know, computer laptop out there in the field. Um, if we need to go ahead and make any uh, fine tuning adjustments and stuff like that, everything is just right here through the LED, the light button, push the button, hold it, you know, go in and make your ch all your changes. Uh, parameter menu, this one right here. All right, um, this is the blinking light. Instead of the solid light, this is the blinking light. You go in there and you can adjust your um, throw. <clears throat> you can adjust your uh, control gain, control style. I like my control style to be um, high or extreme. All right, um, pitch boost and all other stuff. So you pretty much can fine tune how the you want the fly barless unit to react to your flying style. All right, and so that I normally put mine at all at high or at least 3D, you know, and stuff like that. And then I go out and fly, and if I don't like it, I can go ahead and change it out there on the fly. All right, without no laptop and all that stuff. So that's the reason why I like also the B stacks and it never gave me any issues so we're good to go 
All right, so right now we're gonna go ahead and uh, you know charge up the battery and probably put some fuel in it and start her up and all that stuff and yeah hopefully get her out there and actually do some engine break in now the <clears throat> the engine this is the OS 105 HZ not the regulator one this is just a regular all right so you got your three needle um, setup you got your high your your uh, low and then your mid for the high the manual states two turns completely from close so two turns open your mid you know your low end I normally just leave it stock and then your mid is pretty much one turn from close all right so I'm here on Guam it's humid here and all that other stuff so I want to make sure I don't run this engine lean uh, during break-in so instead of two turns I made it two and a half for the high end instead of one I made it one and a half for the mid-range all right now it's all going to depend when I go out there start it up and if it's um, sloppy rich then I'll tune it just a little um, just enough where we can get the engine temperature up to at least 200 to 210 degrees uh, Fahrenheit um, no more than that during break-in trying you know you, you want to make sure the engine is rich but not so rich that you can't get up the temperature because this you're not really breaking in the engine that way all right you want to make sure the engine is running up the temperature at least 200 210 to uh, 220 pushing it but at least 210 um, for the break in get it up to temperature uh, keeping it rich getting nice smoke coming out and everything we're not going to be bothering with the mid range or the low end at the time we're just gonna just run the engine and do that for a few tanks you know and seeing you know just keeping that engine on just don't get it too sloppy rich where performance is lacking all right we're not going to be doing any hardcore 3d or any type of 3d flight during this uh time so it's going to be boring just normal flying around and stuff like that uh for some of you guys who just like to do it that way it's awesome all right so other than that we are done with the setup and uh yeah Time to put some fuel and go fly. All right, guys.
just regular throttle curve, B curve, no governor at the moment. Soon. Shoo shoo!